keep map. Notice how I've mapped them 1QAZ, so it's kind of one track down here. Um, also, a thing to note is along the top, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and all that, they mute the channels. So if I push F2, it's going to mute the kick channel. Push it again, it goes back in. F1 mutes the bass. Push it again, and they're away. Okay. Let's move on to the kick effects. So on the kick channel, I have three filter delays and another auto filter. Filter delays are really good for, um, they're, they're just a delay, it takes a sound, it delays it, copies it, it echoes it out and out and out. Filter delays are good because they, um, you can filter the sound as you cut it off, so as it delays, like you can filter it as it delays, so, it's a bit hard to explain. I'll, um, I'll show, you, show you what I've got it set for for this particular channel on the kick anyway. I've, I've, I've got it so it's, it's kind of a doubler, that's all it really does, it takes the sound and doubles it. So if I push 2, it's going to double it. There you go. So it's kind of, I'm going to stop the bass line. So it kind of roll, makes the kick go twice as fast. The one below that W, this is the next filter delay. This one does it even faster, so it halves it once again. And that of course means if you've got this one going, and you push the next one, you get a roll. There you go. Um, the, other, the, the, the third filter delay is uh, quite crazy. It's set on a really, 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 really short increment with um, a lot of feedback, so it makes that kind of crazy echo sound. Um, the button X under this, this is a, a little bit more complicated. What this does is it changes the cutoff filter of the echo as well as turning on an auto filter after it. So when I push this, it's just going to make it even more crazy. There you go, so you can hear the difference without it, with it. And this is this is good, say, if you wanted to, you know, go... So that's, that's what I've got on the kick channel. What have we got next? Percussion, let's do some percussion stuff. There you go, so that's my percussion loop. Turn the other things off. Nice simple loop. On this channel I've got a phaser, a flanger, and a compressor. Right, so the phaser, this is mapped key number three, this turns it on. Basically a phaser just phases the sound, just makes it go kind of out of it and crazy. It's good if you want to put some strange kind of almost psychedelic noises into it so let's try that so you can hear that and E which is under 3 that's mapped to um, that's mapped to various parameters within the phaser so it'll change the sound of the phaser basically so let's change the bit back to the original again and I'll turn the phaser off Great, the next one is the flanger, which you can see here. Um, this one is mapped to key number D, and, um, or letter D. And when I push that, it's going to turn the flanger on. It also turns the compressor on. The reason I've got a compressor after the flanger is because the um, flanger can give out quite a lot of noise suddenly, and the compressor will make sure that it's always kept at a reasonable limit. So that's the flanger on. If I hit C, it's going to change various parameters within the flanger once again. So that's quite crazy. And that's actually going to change each time you push it because I've got it mapped to the rate and each time I push that the rate gets increased by one increment. Oh, it also changes the, uh, <laughs> the shape of the um, LFO. So uh, yeah, lots of good fun to have on that one. Great, so that's the um, percussion. Now, Sin Pad Vox. This is a funny one. I'll play this loop here for you. So there we go. So that's our loop. And if I go here, I've got an auto filter. Just a simple auto filter. And that'll, when I turn that on, that'll take a particular band of frequencies and sweep them up and down. So we'll have a listen. So it's kind of going up and down and up and down. And if I push R, it's going to change the rate that that happens, so I'll leave it really short. 
make it a little bit slower. Okay, so that can be a bit of fun if you have it on really fast because... Anyway, so turn that one off. The next one I've got is a, a chorus. Um, this does a few things to the sound. It kind of delays the sound and plays it alongside it, which kind of shifts it out of phase and just makes it sound kind of more, a little bit more fat, I guess, if you want to use that term. Um, I'll turn it on so you can have a listen and see what it sounds like. This is mapped at F. So you can see it's kind of fitting the sound up a bit, and if we push a V, it's going to change some parameters and make it real strange. There you go. Great. So that's the sin pad and box thing. Now let's go to Techie Bits. Um, I'll turn Techie Bits 5 on. Stop this one. So I've got an interesting little loop here with lots of strange sounds and reverbs coming through and all this kind of thing. Um, this one's a lot of fun to play with. This is, for those of you who know me, you'll know that I really like glitching and checking things out and making them all, I don't know, strange. Um, so this channel I've got set up to do some quite strange things. Um, I've got a auto filter, a grain delay, a simple delay, and a reverb. Um, so let's turn the first one on. I actually forget a little bit what some of these keys do, so I'm just pushing them and then telling you what they do after I've pushed them. So we'll push 5 and see what happens. Okay, what that's done is it's turned on the auto filter, which once again takes a specific band of frequencies and moves and sweeps it up and down at a rate. Um, this one is 0.76 hertz. I don't know why I chose that, but I had to. Um, it also turns on a simple delay after it, so each time that sweeps, it's going to delay afterwards as well, so creating that kind of repetitive kind of sound you can get there. Push it again. And depending on what you like, you can change the delay time up here, so if you change that to triplets. In fact, I may have even set that to... Oh no. Okay, so the key under that is T. We push T, it turns on the grain delay, and that well, I won't even bother explaining this one, it really mangles the sound, so I push T, it's just going to mess with it. So that's really changed the sound. It's basically delaying it, changing the pitch, sending them all in random places, um, feeding back on itself and all that kind of stuff. It's quite, a, it's quite interesting. Okay. Now, on G, I believe this will be mapped to the reverb, so when I turn this on... Can you turn my headphones off a bit? So you can hear the reverb now, a, 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 rever a reverberation. Reverberation is applied to the um, loop. Kind of makes it sound off in the distance or whatever you like. Um, the, the key below that B, what this does is this is mapped to the decay time of the reverb or the size of the reverb. So when I push B, the reverb, it, all of a sudden it's going to sound like you're in a small enclosed space. So we push this. So you can hear the difference there. Push it again, it goes bigger and smaller. Great. Let's turn that off. So that's the Dicky bits. And lastly, we've got 